the majority of consumers uh, expect the Naira to depreciate while forecasting rises in the borrowing rate, inflation rate and unemployment rate for the current month. Now, respondent households believe the economy would weaken rather than strengthen if prices rose faster than the current pace. Faced with a trade-off between inflation and interest rates, most respondents indicated a preference for lower interest rates. Well, that's just highlight from the CBN's uh, Consumer Household and Report that was released recently. I have international finance and economic analyst now, Mokhtar Mohammed, joining me for more on this conversation. Good morning to you, Mokhtar. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me, Justin. All right, so where do we even start? There's a whole lot happening. There's a whole lot happening in the economy with term. Um, price issues and uh, I'll start from the NNPC because I have a whole lot to say concerning the issue of um, the household report. The NNPC just released a report, uh, I just read it on, um, on X this morning, explaining how um, they are facing financial strain due to PMS supply cost impacting supply sustainability and uh, not too long ago too, there were talks of, uh, you know, a takeover of the Kaduna refinery and as well as that of the Wari report, um, refinery. Mukta, what's the issue? Over time, the NNPC has come out to say uh, they don't have issues. It's a logistics uh, issue. Once uh, before you know it, uh, the issue of um, the scarcity of um, PMS will be done with. But right now, they are actually you know, saying that they have financial strain. In your opinion, what is the issue? I think it's good finally the, the NNPC is saying the truth. Um, I, I, I can't but laugh any time I hear the NNPC talk. I remember some weeks ago where the group managing direction, Mark Harry, said, um, and this time I'm not lying, but I call it finally. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what we have seen that NNPC have run out of lies. Um, hmm. They told us the same line before this crisis came up. They told us uh, it was a, a, a logistics uh, problem, mm. uh, batting problem. Uh, then secondly, they came up with flooding. And then later on, they came up with mm -hmm. a lot of things. And finally, they came. They, they have finally said, uh, well, if you read that, uh, please, uh, well, uh, what is known by everybody. But they've forgotten that they just told us they make a profit of about three point something trillion. And if you make a profit of three point something trillion, you're audited account and mm -hmm. you're going about six billion dollars you didn't knock it off oh. so it just shows that uh, we've had uh, a cash car be, being run by people that are not competent and um uh, that for me is what is happening to nnpc mm -hmm. uh, about uh, handing over kaduna or the final who wants to buy kaduna refinery <laughs> with the kind of oscillate like uh, structure that you have there most of this refinery was built almost 30 or 30 years ago. Uh, you look at worry refinery, turnaround maintenance. So how much are they going to say? We must, you see, in this country, we are full with um, so much politics in our economy, and that's why we've not gotten it right. 19 years, about, is it 19 or 20 something years ago? I think about, not 19 years ago, when President Obasanjo left power, he was about to leave. He sold that refinery to Blue Belt. Then, mm. Um, a company that was owned by Ali Dangote and Femi Atodola. The then president, the Umar Shehul Yiradwa, revoked that sale, that put, that sale, that sale because of pressure from Nopen, Pengesin, and the same NPC that was saying that, look, we can run this thing professionally, we don't need an outsider. And so today we are back to what we should have done some years, like 18 years ago, and we are back to it now. So yeah. I think it's just lack of that long term vision to run our economy. Um, it's, it's this happening when you go out to the street and you see Nigerian queuing for fuel. I mean, it's very disheartening. I, I, I think uh, this is the worst fuel crisis we've had for a very long time. Even through, through the night, Nigerians are queuing. NNPC was not explaining anything to us what was oh. happening until yesterday. The president is in China on a state visit. <laughs> I mean, it's just uh, it's laughable what we are seeing. In this, by this current administration, or oh. by the by the administration of a, a, APC for the past nine years, it has been very catastrophic. Okay, so how do we move forward before we leave um, the energy sector? Now, how do we really move forward? In as much as uh, the NNPC, uh, in quote, like you said, uh, um, run out of lies, and that they are trying to be. Uh, 
uh, truthful this time around that they are trying to sell the refineries. You know, you said we should have done that years ago when um, Obasanjo, you know, uh, gave it out to Blueberry. But my issue right now is, so how do we move forward? How is, since the refineries are, like you have said, almost moribund, what's the light at the tunnel? If you are no one, like according to you, may be interested in buying off these refineries, so just what do we do with those refineries? Well, um, if, if I'm advising anybody mm. and he comes to me whether he should buy Kaduna refinery or water refinery, mm. I would tell him not to buy. Bearing in mind, energy. also, sorry, let me just butt in. Bearing in mind what Dangote is going through right now with his own private refinery, with the issue of our crude exactly. sales and all of that. Exactly, exactly. So if you tell the person to buy, I will tell, him, I will tell him, if he comes to me, but I say, don't buy Kaduna refinery. Mm. If you have to buy Wari refinery, you only buy because of the closeness of a crude supply, and that you must go into a strong agreement that okay. is binding on good party before you should buy. Mm. Uh, we said it before now when. NMPC was having a, a battles with um, Dan Guterri and we said it will come back to hurt us, and that's what has happened. But I think the, the good news um, I heard this morning from one of the dailies is that um, uh, any moment from now, Dan Guti will be rolling out his uh, PMS petrol. Oh. But, the, but the sad news again is that um, it will only be rolling, it will be rolling it out only to NMPC again. Here yeah, we go again, the same NMPC be the one to supply it to. So we have not really gotten there yet. I think the, uh, the time they will begin to roll it out to maybe the independence marketers when the president will now say October first, maybe he will come in there and move the truck. You okay. know, we like we like drama. Maybe the president might just come in after his October one broadcast, come to Lagos and move drive out the truck of Dangote yeah. <laughs> to to announce that we are finally selling crew to Dangote in Naira. Yeah. So I I I think that is that's um our, our, we are at the mercy of um, Dangute Refinery. Um, the NMPC also said Portaco Refinery will come on stream in September. And we are in hopefully, September. Hopefully, we're in September hopefully, already. <laughs> hopefully, he will not say, I, I made a mistake. I, I, I actually wasn't lying, but uh, hopefully, hopefully. All right, let's leave the NNPC and the issue of um, the uh, refineries. Let's talk about the report that was released, that the household expectation survey that was released by the CBN uh, recently for that, uh, for the month of July. Incidentally, Nigerians are, are going to be spending the bulk of what they have on food. School fees, transportation is going to go up Nigerians income for the next six months. Let's start with that. What are your thoughts, really, Mukhtar? Not shocking, expected, cost of living has gone high. Uh, food, no, there's no food security at the moment. Mm. Um, government is still paying lip service to the removal of tariff for household items. If you look at some of those high, household items, that tariff was removed. It more or less looked like if there was pressure on the government and the government decided to respond to that pressure and said, okay, we are going to remove suspending for the past for the next six months. Major household um, um, items are still paying tariff. So definitely cost of food continues to go up. There's no food um, security um, bandit as they having a feed in some of these oh. places, security challenges, bad road network, flooding, um, all these are affecting food security, for, especially in the area of local consumption, I mean local production. Oh. Then again, you move to um, education, which is the key to any nation's um, development. Um, you realize that the um, proprietors of schools both pri private schools and even public schools. Let's talk about our universities. Oh. University students will be paying 80000 every session for electric electricity tariff. So okay. that has also come uh, comes with a cost to the parent. Uh, that is there. Yeah, then the, the private schools also are dealing with high costs of, uh, of, 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 of uh, 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 diesel, gas, electricity. I mean, a high cost of energy, let me just say energy, especially electricity tariff. Oh. Um, and and cause they're also dealing with their staff, also want to hide their salary. So you've seen that some school, I think the minimum increase I've seen in school fees in uh, in Lagos, especially private school, is 30%. Even the public investors, uh, University of Lagos, uh, University of Ibado, University of IFE, have also hiked their, their, their fee. So uh, it's not so bad for transportation. Oh. Uh, CMG buses, as uh, we're still waiting for CMG buses one year after. I, I don't know whether you've seen any oh. or whether you've seen any that can boost, that can reduce the cost of transportation. Oh. We have not seen that yet. So 
Definitely, and if we are talking about CMG buses, we are not even talking about CMG CMG trucks mm-hmm. to move um, food from from uh, from 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 rural area. So all these are challenges that can be mm-hmm. dealt with. They are not rocket science. But like um, like I, I I I heard during your uh, 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 your introduction when the president of the Chattel Institute of Bankers said, it, people have stopped thinking out of the bus. They are not thinking in the cloud. I think. Um, Nigerian <laughs> government have not even finished thinking in the bus, talk less of thinking in the cloud. So we are still very far, far back. All right. Incidentally, from um, just the statistics, uh, um, food um, and other household items are about 54.9 points, education 35.4 points, transportation 30.2 points, electricity 20 points, and medical expenses 12.2 points. Nigerians are not, uh, you know, expecting to invests uh, this uh, the next six months has been spent so much on investment and uh, savings really because um, they actually have gone down investment and savings uh, went down by 22.6 percent and minus uh, 3.9.3 percent respectively so no most people are not really thinking of um, big uh, time purchasing on electronics and all that so or even trying to invest and another another thing I noticed from the report is that most Nigerians are practically living on loans. Well, I think um, for that, credit to a consuming sector should not be bad news. And I mean, um, the, the ability to pay is the major challenge. Uh-huh. Um, American economy is largely driven by lending, which also help their financial uh, 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 inclusion or also help their financial institutions, which are normally the key driver of any economy. But the challenge, the difference between us and them is that uh, with us, uh, there's no job. And there, when they have job, and so that's why you are saying that the, the consumer lending in terms of payment is high in the U.S. compared to Nigeria. Uh, so um, there's uh, some of them are going into their savings, and even that savings from it has even gone down by minus 9.6 percent according to yeah. that report. Yes, investment is not even there at all. Investment is about minus 22 percent, and and this is the time that ordinarily should be the best time for most Nigerians to begin to invest. Actually with the recapitalization of the banking mm-hmm. sector. So what we are going to see is that we have seen a wipeout of the retail investors in the in, 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 in investment spaces. So what we have now are the IN investors. And when, when we talk about the IN investors, you are not even talking about uh, this low, uh, low cadre. You are talking about the politicians. You are talking about uh, the, those, those that are in government, the civil servants. Yeah, those are the high net investors that we have mm. in Nigeria. We, we are not even talking about the institutional investors because they are going with a lot of challenges to be able to invest their money. We are not attracting foreign direct investors. We are not even attracting portfolio investors because of the high exchange rate or the inability to repatriate their money when they, they need to, to, to repatriate. So it's, it's a major challenge because when you are not investing, that means there's no future. So you are definitely living from hand to mouth. So when mm. there's crisis, well, we, we, we definitely will see a lot of Nigerians going be, below the poverty level, and that's what has it's happened thus far. Okay, so the next uh, three, six months are uh, tough times based on um, the reports now. So what should we be doing on the household side? You know, since uh, pr- practically uh, the households can practically not save enough or invest, you know, so what is the panacea right now? And secondly, what happens with the financial sector, in, uh, given that um, the households are really borrowing and the capacity right now to pay is actually limited? Well, um, let's start with the uh, borrowing side of it. I think, um, again, let's get it clear. clear. Most of the uh, banks will not even borrow to you if you don't have a job. Mm. So um, most of the banks also are only doing lending to to former sector. and. So the informal sector, which is the little smaller businesses, are struggling because the banks are not even lending to them. So definitely, uh, that is again is a crisis that is creating a lot of unemployment in that space. So for the former sector, yes, um, what we're seeing that a lot of them are living hand to mouth, barely have salaries because most of all their salaries are also used to pay debts, which is not uh, which is not good in the long run. So what you're seeing is that about less than 30 percent nigerians are able to assess um, this um, loan and most of them payment is also a big challenge to them so you see them restructuring and that's why you have seen the um, what they call the 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 the, the, the loan shark oh. having to 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 tarnish a lot of nigerians and 
um, name. Or what should we be doing at a time like this? Uh, I normally tell people there are two things, especially if you are in Lagos, that you must not pray. Uh, you know Nigeria will believe so much in prayers. Oh. But there are two things that you must not pray for. You shouldn't be taking it to God. You should just do it according to your capacity. Payment of house rent and also school fees. Oh. Because what I have seen is that it's not in the um the the, the 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 expensive nature of the school that your child will become be better is all about um, uh, what they input into your child and what you as a parent also input into your child so we must begin to look at that space and luckily for us as you, from that report nigerians are not spending on luxury hmm. car is minus 56 uh, uh like the electronics and everything so that is for me is a good is good news so okay. that means a lot of our spendings are uh, in the need, highly needable things that we oh. need, uh, like you said, food, education, and transportation. Yeah. So I think that you know, then transportation in the in the sense now is that uh, uh, the, in offices these days, I think they, to reduce those costs, you see somebody said, okay, I, I'll pass through your way, so I'll use your car this week. Next week, we use your mm. own car. <laughs> so those are also ways they are using to reduce um, um, costs. costs, and some of them are also using them government transport. Especially in Lagos State, um, we have to thank the Lagos State government. They've also gone back to say that 25% reduction in transportation oh. has come back again to stay. So that those are the things. I think mostly, largely, yeah. um, if Nigeria needs to survive, government need to come up with a little bit of subsidy, especially in the area of transportation, All right. in the area of um, education also. They also have to look at the private schools and how they can help in terms of energy costs. Oh. They are trying to do that in, in the hospitals. And when you see that figure of minor, uh, 12, just 12 in, in, oh. in terms of women of hospitals, you oh. know that largely this 12% that we are seeing, the largest driven, driven by, um, by the H, HMO. And so those that are not even in the HMO bracket are not even a, a, able to afford healthcare. And so mm -hmm. they go to all these quack premises to get drugs, and you see a lot of people end up uh, losing their life because of that. So it's a big, big challenge that right. the government oh. need to come up and do something for the citizens. All right, Mukta, thanks for all of um, the wonderful inputs that you have, uh, you know, um, provided on the show today. We just hope that we get our act together because it does not make sense where you just uh, make money. At, at the end of the day, you don't even have enough to meet your needs, not to talk of uh, even having some to save or to invest. Uh, Mukta Mohammed is an international finance and economic analyst. Many thanks for your time. Thank you for having me, Justin. Thank you. All right, that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadonye. See you again next time. Bye for now.